What's up everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at the new S1 laser engraver from Xtool. This is a fully enclosed diode laser. It's got a ton of great features and we're going to be going over them today. If you guys aren't familiar with Xtool, they're at the forefront of the laser engraver game. I've got an F1 over there, a P2, which is their CO2 laser, and now I've got the S1 here. Uh, for a long time, the D1 was considered one of the best lasers. It's been one of my favorite ones, especially the new D1 Pro and you were able to get that in 40 watt, which was a huge upgrade. So these are available in 40 watt, like I have here. You can also get it in 20 watts if you want to save a little money on it, or you can get a two watt infrared laser, which is good for doing like metal and stuff like that. A big complaint that people had about open lasers like that over there, or like the D1, is that if you have kids around or really any other people around, they all have to be wearing glasses while you're running it. So their solution was to completely enclose this one. This is your safety glasses here, essentially. So you no longer need these when you're using it. So you'll be able to look right at it. It's not gonna hurt your eyes. It also contains the fumes. And then you can see in the back here, it has a exhaust port, which you can hook up to a window or something and pump all those toxic fumes outside. So what you're looking at here is the S1 on top. I've got their riser base on the bottom. This will allow you to pass objects through that are too long. Uh, you can also work on thicker material, or you can use one of these rotary attachments if you wanna do tumblers and stuff like that. And as far as the base S1 goes, there's virtually no assembly required to it. You have to attach your laser head onto here, which there's just two screws. There's a couple screws that you'll remove to be able to slide this around. Um, it's, like I said, it basically comes as you see it here. So I'm not even gonna go through an unboxing on it. Now with the riser base, there are four screws that you have to put in each corner. And then there's a little bit of tape that you add here to help seal that up. But again, there's virtually nothing to it. And as with their previous machines, their instruction manuals are just amazing. It's all full color photos. They break everything down step by step and explain it to you and show you exactly what you're doing so you can't mess anything up. They even walk you through getting started with programming and actually running your machine. And as far as the programs go, you can either use Lightburn, which is something that I use on a lot of my lasers, uh, or you can use Xtool Creative Space, which is their own program. And they've really been working hard to dial this thing in and it will let you use a lot of the special features that this machine has that you probably wouldn't be able to use with Lightburn. I'm also using the optional honeycomb grid on this. I really like this. It comes with these low profile magnets. So a lot of the time, if you used regular magnets, it would actually interfere with your laser. Now you don't have to worry about that. Another optional accessory I have here is this air pump. This works with your air assist. There's two different versions of these. This is the better one. It's got a bit more control to it. And as you can see on the back here, this stuff is all fully integrated to the laser. You're not gonna have to worry about running the wiring or anything, it's already pre-run for you. And there's an air hose and everything that you just hook right up to the laser. So it's super easy. All right, now you can connect to this via Wi-Fi or USB. If you do wanna use the Wi-Fi, you'll first have to connect via USB and then you can configure everything in there. And I have mine connected via Wi-Fi since it's all the way across my office here. And you can see here that I'm able to jog it around and do everything that I would just as if it was connected. All right, this is my first time running the machine. I haven't actually looked at any of the instructions, but I kind of have a pretty good idea of what I need to do. So I'm just going to move this over here. And the first thing we need to do is actually measure the height here to see how thick this material is. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on this little thing here that says distance and you can see it drops that probe down and it'll touch off on whatever our material is then it moves over to this piece in the corner and it's just getting a height comparison so now it should know yep there we are that's our distance to that piece of material now we can go to this here and we need to actually figure out where the material is for the x and y so i'll click start marking and we get some instructions here and what i need to do is go to the top left corner with our crosshairs here and when i'm happy with that i'll press 
this button here. And if we look here, I've got the measurement. Now I'm just going to move it to this corner. And again, I'll hit that button. And there we are, we have both positions. So if I click done, you can see here it's laid out where that piece of material is. Now I'm just gonna bring in some clip art and you can drag this over, put it down in this corner here, make it a little bigger. And now I want to engrave this and let's see, actually I need to be on this screen here and I need to define my material. So this is the three millimeter basswood. Now I can click on the drawing, again, go to engrave. So that made it solid. So if I was on score, it's just gonna outline it. Engrave will be a solid where it fills it in and then cut is kind of like score, but it's gonna be more powerful. So let's engrave this one and it's set our power automatically. And let's just go ahead and frame it. And I'm gonna come to the machine, press this button, and it'll show right where that's gonna be. All right, framing is completed. And now let's go to process. And it just gives us an example so we know what we're looking at. I'll click start up here. I could frame it again if I wanted. And again, hit this button. just want to point out here while this is running, this came on automatically because I've got it set to auto. And check this out. No smoke or anything is coming out of the machine. Not bad at all. Just getting popped right out the window there. I don't even smell anything. I don't smell any burning wood or anything. And of course, we could have adjusted those settings on here, got this to run a little faster. But again, I just wanted to show you guys, it's just super easy to use if you just use the factory settings. You don't even need to think about anything. see that smoke getting sucked out. Also check out how quiet this is. This isn't much louder than like a an inkjet printer or something. Alright, 
so it's still running that fan to suck some of that smoke out. But even when I opened the door, no smoke came pouring out of the machine or nothing. And still, I can't smell anything. I think that's great. It's a pretty nice engraving, just deep enough. Now let's try cutting something. All right, for this, I just brought in another piece of clip art, this star here, and I've got it set to cut. So you can see it's adjusted the power to 100. The speed is 25 millimeters per second. Now I'll just click processing. Again, it gives me that example and we'll click start. And I can come over and press that button again. This is definitely making a lot more smoke. But still, it's pumping it all right out the back. And that was pretty fast. So let's see if that cut through. I'm just gonna let it get the rest of that smoke out of there. Looks like it didn't go through. We can probably slow that speed down a little. So let's try it one more time. All right, so I moved the star over in the program and I want you to check this out. So I'm gonna frame it again. So I had just pushed this back to get it out of the way. But look, it still knows exactly where that material is. All right, let's try running this again. I lowered the speed down to 10 millimeters per second. Process, start, click the button. So it's moving a little slower there. It actually looks a lot cleaner. Again, it's making a ton of smoke, but it's pumping it all right out the window. Let that get the rest of that smoke out of there. Looks pretty good. And there you go. You can see it cut right through on that one. So we may be able to speed that up a little bit, but it really looks pretty good. The edges aren't too crispy or anything. It's a nice clean cut. And you know, it fits right back in there. Not too big of a kerf. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick just how easy it is to get this machine running. Even if you have no experience using stuff like this, you're gonna be able to get it working and make some really cool stuff. Now, they've got a ton of other features for this. There's a conveyor belt system, just like the P2 has. Uh, you can engrave curved surfaces. Again, you can use the rotary. Um, I'll do videos showing some different stuff like that. Uh, again, I just wanted to keep this one kind of simple and just show you guys how easy it is to use. I'm really loving this machine. If you guys would like to get one for yourself, I'll put an affiliate link down below. I'd really appreciate it if you check that link out. It really helps me out. You pay the same great price, but I'll get a small kickback from the company. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you could like, share, comment on the video, all those things really help me out and I'd really appreciate it. And thank you for watching and I'll see everyone next time.